Hello, welcome to my channel today. I'll be summarizing a book, Green Brain, The Surprising Truth About Wheat, Carbs, and Sugar, Your Brain's Silent Killers, by Dr. David Perlmutter. In Green Brain, renowned neurologist Dr. David Perlmutter reveals a revelation that has been concealed in the medical literature for far too long. Carbohydrates are harming our brain. Whole grains, for example, can cause dementia, ADHD, epilepsy, anxiety, persistent headaches, depression, decreased libido, and much more. Grain Brain is a groundbreaking and important book that demonstrates that our brain's fate is not determined by our genes. It can be found in the food we eat. Inflammation is at the root of all degenerative ailments, including brain disorders, and it can be triggered by carbs, particularly those that contain gluten or are heavy in sugar. Dr. Perlmutter describes what happens to the brain when it comes into contact with common substances found in everyday bread and fruit bowls. How statin drugs may be erasing our memory, why a diet rich in good fats is best, and how to stimulate the formation of new brain cells at any age. Dr. Perlmutter's groundbreaking four-week regimen teaches us how to maintain our brain healthy, vibrant, and brilliant while drastically lowering our chance of devastating neurological disorders and easing more common everyday ailments, all without using any drugs. We can put the plan into action with the help of simple tactics, great dishes, and weekly targets. Grain Brain teaches us how to take control of our smart genes, restore wholeness, and experience lifetime health and vigor with a mix of anecdotes, cutting-edge science, and easy, practical advice. David Perlmutter is an American celebrity doctor and author located in Naples, Florida. Perlmutter is a well-known health author who promotes a functional and holistic approach to treating brain diseases. Perlmutter is a health advisor for Men's Health and The Dr. Oz Show. Perlmutter's book, Grain Brain, which was published in September 2013 and became a bestseller, promoted the idea that gluten causes neurological problems. He has published in the medical literature despite not being primarily a medical researcher. Until its sale in 2015, he was the president of the Perlmutter Health Center. We've had to trace someone's immediate cause of death to a particular illness since the mid-20th century. Today, those single diseases are more likely to be chronic, degenerative diseases. Alzheimer's disease is a modern medical bogeyman that is often in the news. Grain Brain is the first book to demonstrate how modern grains are quietly harming our brain. The author demonstrates how fruit and other carbs may be harmful to one's health and have far-reaching implications. Grain Brain provides a novel approach to studying the underlying causes of brain dysfunction, as well as a hopeful message of optimism. This isn't just another diet book or how-to manual for preventative health. It's a game changer. We often believe that maintaining our brain's health and mental faculties is beyond our control. We tend to segregate brain disorders from the other afflictions we blame on poor behaviors. This book is going to alter that perspective by demonstrating the link between how we live and our chance of getting a variety of brain-related issues. Neuroscientists have discovered that what we eat and how much we consume affects our brains. According to Dr. David Perry, the public is increasingly being deceived by an industry that promotes food popularity perceived to be nutritious. Perry is a board-certified neurologist and American College of Nutrition Fellow. He is also the only doctor in the country who is both board-certified and an ACN member. Diabetes increases your chance of Alzheimer's disease. Diabetes and dementia may not appear to be associated, but they are. This book will show you how similar each of our probable brain dysfunctions is to diseases that we seldom assign to the brain. There is no doubt that the introduction of wheat grain into the human diet was one of the most significant and far-reaching events in the final downfall of brain health in modern civilization. David Perry, Gluten is a silent germ that can cause long-term harm without your knowledge. He claims that food is a potent epigenic modulator, which means that it may modify our DNA for the better or the bad. Perry says, most of us feel that we have the freedom to live our lives whatever we want, and then resort to doctors for a quick cure in the forms of medications. He claims that this book is misguided for two reasons. According to the American Diabetes Association, 
developing diabetes doubles your risk of Alzheimer's disease. According to author Dr. Sanjay Gupta, lifestyle modifications can maintain your brain healthy and prevent brain illnesses. Gupta says, you'll start eating differently right away, and you'll see yourself from a new perspective. This book is meant to empower us by giving us control over our future brains. This book tells us in detail what we know and how we can use it, based on decades of clinical and laboratory research, as well as exceptional results the author has seen in his practice over the past 30 years. The writer of this book will also provide a complete action plan to improve our cognitive health and add years to our life. The author encounters many people who have tried everything and had every neurological exam or scan possible in the hope of finding a cure for their disease. The great majority of them heal and find a route back to health with a few easy prescriptions that do not include medicines, surgery, or talk therapy. Part 1, The Whole Grain Truth, takes us on a tour of our brain's friends and foes, exposing us to dysfunction and sickness. The author explains what occurs to the brain when it comes into contact with components like wheat, sugar, and certain fats. Inflammation is a potentially lethal biological process at the root of brain illness. We must consume foods that activate the body's own potent antioxidant and detoxifying process. Part 1 concludes with a more in-depth examination of some of our most vexing psychological and behavioral diseases, including ADHD and depression. The striking visual showed that drugs had the same impact on the brain as a hot pan on an egg. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. This very well sums up my point regarding our brains' dependence on grains. Allow me to demonstrate. Then it's up to us to determine if we will take this all seriously and look forward to a healthier, disease-free future. We all have a lot to lose if we don't take this message seriously and a lot of gain if we do. It is now common knowledge that those who want to lose weight must reduce their carbohydrate intake. Cutting carbs, on the other hand, does not just mean fewer sweets and, as a result, less fat. It also means that we're putting ourselves at risk for a peril that's much scarier than fat. Brain Damage Yes, all of those pastries and pasta we eat are not only making our belly grow, but they are also increasing our risk of chronic illnesses like diabetes and Alzheimer's disease. We understand how tough it is to believe that a few slices of bread or a bowl of spaghetti might endanger our physical as well as emotional health. However, studies demonstrate that grain and wheat products include gluten, a harmful protein linked to depression, headaches, and, as previously said, Alzheimer's disease. While treating a patient with severe migraines, the author of Grain Brain understood the severity of gluten intolerance. The patient did not respond to even the most potent migraine drugs during treatment. She discovered the remedy in a gluten-free diet, which eliminated her problems in less than six months. The neuroscientist believes that everyone is susceptible to gluten, in part because it is addicting. This explains why eating anything sweet, such as a donut or muffin, gives us a rush. To put it another way, after dissolving in our intestines, gluten binds to morphine receptors in our brain, which are the same receptors that medicines bind to connect pleasurable feelings. Gluten is a dangerous medication that most people are unaware of, and it is hazardous to their health. Gluten can have the same negative effect on our body as we products that we perceive to be good. We are the result of an optimum design that nature has fashioned over thousands of generations. And while we are living longer than our ancestors, we might be living far better lives, free of illness. While we may undoubtedly argue that we now have far better therapies for many ailments, this does not change the reality that millions of people are suffering needlessly from problems that might have been prevented. Grain Brain investigates gluten's damaging effects on the brain through the lens of these frequent behavioral and psychiatric diseases. A diet high in inflammatory carbohydrates and low in healthy fats confuses the mind in more ways than one. Gluten elimination is frequently the surest ticket to healing for various brain disorders that burdens millions. And this simple prescription may frequently top pharmacological therapy. 
Inflammation was a major factor in almost every aspect of this young boy's physiology, including his ear difficulties, joint discomfort, ability to collect himself, and inability to sit still. Instead, we opted to address the root source of this child's problems. Inflammation. Brain injury can start with little inconveniences like headaches and inexplicable anxiety and escalate to more serious illness like depression and dementia. In this installment of the series, we look at what happens to the brain when it is assaulted with carbs, many of which contain inflammatory elements like gluten, which can irritate your nervous system. Cheeseburgers, soda, pizza, bagels, bread, cinnamon buns, pancakes, waffles, scones, spaghetti, cake, chips, crackers, cereal, ice cream, and sweets are all mentioned. You can eat fruit all year and get almost any type of food at the push of a button. We performed a basic gluten sensitivity test, which assesses the amount of antibodies against gliadin, one of the wheat proteins. Stewart's level was, predictably, 300% higher than normal. I informed Nancy that we needed to avoid gluten. Stewart, a toddler, was diagnosed with Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, and began taking medication. The toddler's mother, Nancy, claims that he was able to achieve huge changes in his health and attitude via nutrition rather than medicine. She claims that the medical system frequently persuades parents that medicine is the greatest fast cure. Toddler has excelled in reading and arithmetic, and we do not expect any future issues with his hyperactivity. He has grown so quickly that he is now one of the tallest students in his class. So, what should we eat? Fats. Fats, that's right. Carbohydrates can be lived without for a short time, but fats are a different story. They cannot be lived without for an extended period. To put it another way, we must feed our body a low-carbohydrate, high-fat diet to maintain its health. What about cholesterol, though? Isn't it a pity? No, it isn't. At least not in the way we may think. Foods heavy in fat have little effect on the cholesterol levels in our bodies. Our bodies are designed to rely on fat for energy. So quit being afraid about cholesterol and start avoiding sweets. Sugar is terrible for our entire body, including our internal organs and brain, not just our waistline. Above all, exercise a few times a week as physical activity benefits our brain just as much as cerebral workouts and study. Key Lessons from Grain Brain The Role of DNA The Risks That Come With Sugar A Common Myth the role of DNA is not naturally designed for the lifestyles we lead, and as a result, we suffer from a variety of ailments as a result of our choices. Exercise, nutrition, sleep, and stress level all have an impact on the activation of our genes, according to scientists. The process of neurogenesis, or the formation of new brain neurons, is governed by DNA. Of course, regulating how much and what we consume can boost our DNA's ability to make more of these neurons. The amount of sleep a person gets has an impact on his or her genes. Different hormones are affected by getting enough sleep. The risk that comes with sugar. Dementia, anxiety disorder, ADHD, migraines, autism, Tourette's syndrome, and other conditions are all made worse by sugar. A common myth. People have the misperception that if we don't eat enough, our bodies will store fat and slow down our metabolism. Fasting, on the other hand, can be good for us if we know how to do it properly. It can help us lose weight, improve our brain functioning, and increase our energy levels. The message of this book is that a low-carbohydrate, high-fat diet benefits the brain and overall health by regulating systemic inflation and keeping blood sugar and insulin levels low. For most people who eat a regular American diet, the diet proposed will help them manage their blood sugar and reduce inflammation. Sugar and processed carbohydrates are demonized. No one can argue that they're unhealthy. Unrefined grains and whole plant food starches, on the other hand, are given the same designation. Interesting, because epidemiological studies consistently show that large groups of people who eat these foods as their primary source of calories live the longest and have the fewest chronic diseases. The only diet that has been demonstrated to be healthy consists solely or primarily of whole plant foods, including whole grains. 
Most people will still lose weight and have less inflammation if they follow this diet since it eliminates processed carbohydrates and starches. Perlmutter advises his readers that within a month or two, they should be able to reduce their CRP, a routinely used lab test that measures inflammation, to less than 3. Mine is 0.4 on a whole food plant-based diet, or WFPB, which is approximately average for people who eat this way. Many people who follow the grain brain diet will develop high serum cholesterol, but the author claims that this is not only normal, but beneficial. Arthrosclerosis, the leading cause of heart attacks and strokes, is rarely acknowledged. Only stated on one page is something that everyone gets regardless of diet. This is ludicrous, as I'm sure the author is well aware. Many people, including those who have lived their entire lives on a WFPB diet, do not develop arthrosclerosis. Those who adopt this diet can reverse arthrosclerosis. A WFPB is the only well-proven treatment for arthrosclerosis, which is still the leading cause of death in the United States. Cancer is mentioned a few times, despite numerous studies linking animal protein consumption, a mainstay of a grain brain diet, with increased cancer risk. The author thinks that overweight persons will have fewer cancers, although the book recommends eating non-starchy veggies that is undeniably a good idea. It is unlikely to compensate for the rest of the terrible recommendations.